Hello, Flame community. This is Jeff Kyle with the Flame Learning Channel. If you've spent any time in the film and episodic shot-based world, then you probably know the importance of metadata in the visual effects pipeline. Updates like this one are some of the first steps toward metadata pipeline integration with other software, and that is incredibly exciting. Flame 2024 introduces a handful of changes and improvements to the way the start frame field is used, giving you a lot more control and flexibility with batch creation and metadata manipulation. In this video, we'll be going over where and how the start frame field has changed, how to modify the start frame in the timeline, on the desktop, and in batch, how handles and time warps are affected by the start frame, and finally, how all of this affects exporting your media. We'll start out by taking a look at the preferences. In previous versions of Flame, Eclipse Start Frame was only relevant in Batch, so its settings were located in the Batch tab. But now that the Start Frame is a field visible and modifiable in all areas of Flame, it belongs in the General tab. When the button Use in Create Batch Group is enabled, batch groups created from the Conform tab or from a sequence publish will inherit the Start Frame from the Start Frame number set here. Disabling it will cause the batch groups to use the start frame value of the clip in question. Beneath that is another new category called New Batch Group, allowing you to choose what happens when you create an empty batch group with the context menu in the media panel. You can choose to use the start frame value you set above, or use the first clip's start frame as the batch's start frame. And finally, in the Batch and Batch Effects tab, when the Use Media Start Frame option is enabled, newly created Batch Effects clips will have their start frame set based on the clip's start frame, and when it's disabled, the Batch Effects will have a start frame of 1. Image sequences, by their very nature, come with predefined start frames in the form of their file numbering convention. Flame recognizes that and sets the first numbered frame in an image sequence as that clip's start frame. For instance, here in the Media Hub, with this clip, you can see when I switch this image sequence from file sequence to frames, that the first numbered frame is 350. When I import this clip and take a look at the Timeline tab, I can see right here next to the source timecode window that the start frame is 350. Movie sequences, on the other hand, will take on whatever value you've set in your start frame preferences. Just to continue this example, I have a movie file here that doesn't have a start frame because it isn't an image sequence. This means Flame will default to whatever we've set in the general tab's preferences to set its start frame. In this case, my preferences are set to 1001, so this movie file came in with a start frame of 1001. When it comes to modifying Eclipse start frame, there are a number of pathways ahead. If you're in the timeline, you can use the context menu and select Change Start Frame, which pulls up a dialog box allowing you to assign a new start frame. Another option is to head to the Tools tab, click on the Utilities menu, and select Change Frame, giving you a menu similar to before. If you have more than one or two clips you need to modify, you can multi-select the clips, click the context menu, and then select Reformat. From here, you can select Change Frame, switch the timecode dropdown to Frame, select the new start frame value, and hit Reformat. Also worth mentioning that if you find yourself changing a clip's timecode via the Tools tab, the Utilities menu, and the Change Timecode button, there are a few new start frame options available. If you choose to update the start frame and select Absolute Value, the start frame will be converted to its timecode equivalent number, which is how it behaved in previous versions of Flame. The other option is Offset Value, which will take the difference between the current timecode and the new timecode and offset the start frame by that amount. If we open up a sequence with some media in it and head on over to the Conform tab, taking a look at the event list, you'll see there's a new column, or rather a splitting of one column into two, that includes both timecode and frames. Here you can select any number of clips, select into one of the start frame columns, choose your new start frame, and hit Enter to modify all of the selected clip's start frames. Before we move on, it's also worth mentioning that the ever-useful Alt-Click used to quickly find information about the selected clip now includes start frame information regardless of your time view mode. I am currently in frame view mode, and when I Alt-Click on this clip here, I can see things like the length of the clip in the cut, the full length of the clip, the source start and end frame, and the record start and end frame. But now, if I switch the time view mode to timecode with the Control or Command-Alt-T shortcut, I can still 
at a glance, see some important frame information without switching back. This is great not only for confirming your start frame is set correctly, but also to ensure certain clips, like audio clips for example, span the number of frames that you'd expect them to. Heading on over to Batch, you'll see the start frame area is a little different than in previous versions of Flame. The start frame field is no longer directly modifiable to avoid any accidental adjustment when scrubbing the current frame, and if we take a look at the drop down menu, you'll see we have a few options. We can change the start frame and set a new value with the calculator to whatever we want. The other two options are to use the start frame value, which is referring to the start frame we set in the preferences, and use first clip value, which uses the first imported clips start frame. As you remember from the beginning of this video, which of these two options that is selected by default depends on the preferences, but it can be modified here in batch at any time on a one-off basis. When modifying a clip's start frame, it's important to understand just how a clip's handles are compensated. Modifying the start frame will modify the first visible frame in the sequence or clip, not the true first frame relative to the head handles. If you're working with media that has its handles extended or doesn't have any handles, then this is irrelevant. But if you do have handles when you modify the start frame, it's important to understand what's happening. For example, I have a clip here with 204 head handles. I can see the start frame is currently set to 1001. When I change the start frame using the context menu and set it to 250, we can see the first visible frame is set to 250, and if I extend the head handles, we can see that Flame has properly compensated for the head handles and has numbered the clip's frames correctly. While we're here, let's take a look at the time warp timeline effects. I have a time warp applied to this clip here, and when you click on this time warp quick menu selector, you'll notice that along with interpolation and rendering, which were present in previous versions of Flame, there's now a new field called start frame. Choosing this allows you to decide what happens to the start frame as a result of the time warp timeline effects. If you choose custom, you can set your start frame manually, similar to what we've seen earlier with other change start frame menus. When you choose pre-time warp, the start frame will be unaffected by the time warp. And finally, when you choose post-time warp, the start frame will be adjusted based on the time warp. It's important to note that this last option, post-time warp, is chiefly used as a visual guide in the frame display field to keep track of how the time warp is affecting the start frame, similar to the way time code is displayed. If this clip is exported, the start frame metadata will still export in sequential order rather than what is displayed in the frame display field to ensure the image sequence behaves correctly. When it's time to export your media as a file sequence, there are a handful of ways to control how your image sequences are numbered, and it's all tied to the Frame Index field. We'll start by going over the fields from previous versions of Flame, starting with Custom Start Frame. This is the field that used to be called Use Start Frame from previous versions of Flame that allows you to set your own start frame here on export that will set the first frame of whatever media you're exporting to the value set here. Use time code converts the time code to a frame value and was one of the more common default settings in past versions of Flame. Use preferences uses the start frame field set in the general tab of the preferences menu. And finally, use start frame has been changed from what it meant in previous versions of Flame and now uses the clip's start frame metadata as they were set by or imported into Flame. Since the start frame is already set before you get to this point, you don't have to worry about the handles since Flame properly compensates for them. If you like these videos and you're finding them helpful, please subscribe to the Flame Learning channel and click the bell to stay notified about new content. Feel free to comment any questions or suggestions below. Until next time, thanks a bunch for watching.